Hey everybody, you're looking at Midtown Lux Black Max, and I'm going to talk about something I attempted last week. I attempted to do an upgrade to Windows 10 on this machine, but I had to roll back to Windows 7. I'm going to explain why. Basically, um, I decided to um, upgrade this to Windows 10 Pro, same way. Mom and Dad would have the newer features of Windows 10 available on their machine. And when you think about it, it shouldn't be an issue at all. I mean, this machine does not actually run. I mean, it has one of me sitting in there, but um, it's never used. The Seton Infinity TV tuner is inside the machine. Um, all the tuners are actually used by other computers on the network. Um, we have three TV boxes now. Um, that are just for Windows Media Center. They have Windows 7. They'll never have Windows 10. <laughs> That's what they're for. Um, basically, with Windows 10, although the Seton did have the drivers, you know, the Seton Tuner drivers did work, um, Windows 10 seemed to have an issue with network bridging. That's the only problem I had was network bridging. And I noticed this a while back um, when I was setting up computers in VMware, you know, virtual machines. If you attempted to do a, um, if you attempted to network those virtual machines over a network bridge, you would have connectivity problems. And it was just a big, big freaking headache. Now, anyways, um, like five minutes after I got this thing upgraded to Windows 10, I went into, you know, Network and Sharing Center, went to um, Adapter Properties bridged the Seton tuner and the um, built-in Ethernet um, controller, bridged those two together, went into Device Manager and set the support bridging uh, mode on the Seton to yes to enable the bridging functionality, restarted the machine and it did pick right up and it was bridged and you know the TV box over there you could actually watch TV just fine, no issues at all. So, you know, I went on through the process of getting Windows 10 configured and all, all that good stuff. And everything seemed to work fine. But a day later, all of a sudden, viewing a list in conflict um, popped up on the screen. Because the TV box over here had lost connection with the tuner. So, restarted this computer. Um, it took two or three restarts for the tuner to come online. Basically, when you restart the machine or, or um, start it up, You'll see um, there's a blue LED inside the tuner back there at the very back. Right now it's very dim. When it's solid blue and it's lit up dim, it means it's connected to the network. Now when you start your computer up and you see it flashing, it's just waiting for the bridge to come on so that way it could connect. And once it connects that light that's um, flashing a, a bright blue, once that you know once the tuner connects to the network, it changes to the um, solid um, dim blue. So basically with Windows 7 when the machine starts up, matter of fact as soon as you see the login screen that light is already changed from flashing bright to dim solid blue. Meaning it's already connected and ready to go. Rarely ever had this issue with Windows 7, um, especially in the Black Max. I mean it was always very reliable at connecting you know just fine. But with Windows 10, there'll be some times where the flashing light would never turn solid. It would, just, it would, it would just never connect. And you know, I'd have to remove the bridge, delete, you know, delete the bridge, re-add it. Sometimes it'd take forever to delete it. Sometimes it'd take forever to re-add it. And sometimes it would just say unidentified network, no internet access. And yeah, it was, it was very, very flaky. I mean, <laughs> very flaky at the, you know, very unstable connection. I mean, sometimes it would connect, and you would see the the, um, the light inside turn solid, and you'd have TVs working again. You could access the internet just fine, but if you wanted to file explore and try to access like the Midtower Deluxe, or you know the the TV box over that you know accessing files in those machines, immediately after trying to access, you know, double clicking on the computer's name and explore, it would say, you know, com you know, the X computer is cannot it cannot be accessed. You know, it would say. Windows cannot access, you know, Cube Computer One, for example, that's Midtower Lux's name. Windows cannot access, you know, it would say check your network connection and blah blah blah. 
but I could ping the machine just fine. But yet, um, you know, in the same time, if I tried to access this machine uh, from a different computer in this house, um, I had the same problem. You know, and sometimes I would, and basically, another thing that wouldn't work properly is W7 Caller ID Server. Uh, when a phone call came in, it would not send out the caller ID information to this machine or any other computers in the house. So it was obviously having network connectivity problems right then and there. Other times, as I mentioned, it would say un unidentified network, and you would just get nowhere. And I mean, I have went boot in the save mode, removed the bridge, re-added it, just done all sorts of crap. And it was I just determined that Windows 10, um, bridging in Windows 10, this is very flaky, very unstable. This may have also been a problem with Windows 8 as well. Because let me tell you, as soon as we went back to Windows 7, I done it last night actually, I just went and restored back to Windows 7. As soon as the machine booted it back into Windows 7, Tune was immediately online like it always has been. So, you know, it's very unfortunate. Um, the network bridging was the only problem I had. Yeah, that was the only problem I had in Windows 10. When the tuner was connected only, you know, to the network, um, I didn't have any issues with the tuning adapter or nothing like that. Drivers worked just fine. Even though this machine, you know, even though Windows 10 does not have Windows Media Center, it still would support the seating driver-wise and the tuning adapter up there. Um, and, uh, you know, they would work properly. But whenever the, um, yeah, basically whenever the bridging functionality just, you know, crashed out, um, it was just a headache from, from there. Um, I went through this for like two or three days. And it seemed like roughly a day, you know, like a day's timing was when the issues would come back. So I uh, went back to 107 and say the heck with 107 for now. Um, because, you know, I had some different options. I had the option of placing this tuner into that computer over there. But that computer has an NVIDIA based motherboard which the seat and tuners do not support. I would have had to replace a motherboard in that computer, reload Windows, and all the recordings on that on that machine would have been foobar because of time war cables one copy flagging. Um, that was one option. Another option would have been to go online and purchase a three hundred dollar Seton Infinity V6 Ethernet um, tuner, but but you know it's like this. Um, I don't feel like shelling out three hundred dollars on a tuner right now. Got other expenses I need to take care of. So, um, yeah. This when I rolled this thing back to 107. The good, the, I guess the good news out of this is um, this thing can go back to 110 anytime I wish. Even if, it, even if it's after this coming June. Because um, the Black Max now has a what's called a digital and time activation for Windows 10. So I can clean it on Windows 10 or do whatever with it. And should be good to go. So anyways, um, that was some information regarding Windows 10 on the Black Max. Um, Windows 10, unfortunately, seems to have very flaky um, bridging functionality. I don't know if Windows 8 was the same way, because you know, I, I never really tested Windows 8, but think about it like this. Um, as soon as Windows 8 came out, um, Seton mentioned that um, Windows 8 does not support network tuning. So they never release the network tuners um, software for um, for that. Also, um, yeah, and, um, and it makes me think, you know, it could be because of the flaky bridging support of the newer operating systems. And, you know, I had this problem in the Threshold 1 build of Windows 10 and the Threshold 2, the, you know, the version 15.11, the November um, version, you know, had, had issues with that. So uh, that's that's what it is. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.